Made in 1979, at the end of the most successful and innovative decade in Australian cinema history, vampire film Thirst manages to stand alongside other Aussie genre classics such as Mad Max, made in the same year, Patrick, The Cars at Eight Paris, or Long Weekend. The film was produced by Anthony Iganain, an Uber producer who cleverly exploited the tax incentives given to film investors by the government at the time, which directly led to the explosion of films now termed Ausploitation. Ganain would recruit directors from television, and for first he hired Rod Hardy, who would go on to have an illustrious career in Australian and American television, directing episodes of Prisoner Cell Block H and The Soap Opera Neighbours, as well as American television shows such as The X-Files, Supernatural and Battlestar Galactica. The cast is primarily Australian, but the international market was catered for through the presence of British star David Hemmings and American character actor Henry Silver. The film's Australianness that makes it stick out, though, from other vampire films, as it transplants the quintessentially European heritage of vampire lore to the New World, this newness being both geographical and historical. The film is set in 1970s Australia and follows Kate, played by Chantal Contouri, after she is abducted by a secret cabal of vampires known as, known as the Brotherhood, whose bloodlines go back centuries. The reason that Kate is abducted is because she is a direct descendant of Elizabeth Bathory, the Hungarian countess known for her cruelty and sadism and who legend has it, bathes in the blood of young virgins in order to keep her young. Elizabeth Bathory has of course provided inspiration for other female vampires on screen in films such as Daughters of Darkness, the Hammer Horror film Countess Dracula and The Moral Tales just to name a few. Kate resists the Brotherhood's indoctrination, so they resort to elaborate mind games and drug-induced hallucinations in order to coerce Kate into questioning her reality and loyalty and accept her place amongst those who deem themselves to be superior in race and lineage. The film actually opens with one such scene as Kate awakens to find herself lying in a coffin in what appears to be an old Gothic castle. The settings in the film manage to balance between this old gothic style associated with traditional vampire, ta vampire tales and the modern high-tech and industrial present. Kate is held captive in a research facility which holds within it the aforementioned gothic looking structure as well as a fully functioning farm and factory. What separates the farm and factory from the norm is the produce that it manufactures. It is people, referred to as blood cows, who are milked for their blood, which is then pack packaged and processed for the Brotherhood's members. Members then gather from all around the world at the facility, and we follow with them as they are given a grand tour, with the tour guide pronouncing with a mixture of pride and glee that all donors are kept on a strict diet, and all produce is certified free of contaminants. The roots of the clean eating movement is right here. One, can, one cannot help when watching this, these scenes of also thinking of the history of factory farming where land and animals are exploited in the, in the pursuit of greater profit. Certainly Australia is a land that holds a great many resources which over the years since colonisation have been stripped, mined and farmed almost to extinction. We're simply a superior race of people who over the centuries have proved that the drinking of the vital human essence confers youth Surely the way the Brotherhood view themselves as superior to other humans, and with blood drinking being the ultimate aristocratic act, is not that dissimilar from how we humans view other animals, and how we position ourselves as being above them, which then allows us to mistreat and exploit them. Just looking into the harsh realities of the dairy industry, and the farm in the film is explicitly referred to as a dairy, one can actually start to see some clear parallels. The secret society that gather at the farm certainly don't look superior. These are not the pale-skinned dark lords of Anne Rice novels, but people who are extraordinary only in their ordinariness. It is with some humour that at one point we see an old biddy with pink rinsed hair lean over to drink from the young maiden on the altar, accompanied by loud slurping noises. <coughs> the ritual scene takes place after the guided tour, creating a juxtaposition between ancient rituals and modern methods. Yet, at the heart of it all is the battle between instinct and civilised morality. For while the Brotherhood may see themselves as superior, elevated by their wealth and centuries of dominance over land and people, they are still slaves to their thirst. 